Good evening, church family. Good evening. Pray with me before I start. Dear Father, thank you for the privilege of being able to open your word and to uh, communicate it to others. Thank you for the privilege. I pray, Father, you take what I've studied and bring it back to my mind, help me to do it with clarity and uh, in your spirit. I pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. I'm the second leg of a seven uh, leg journey. Um, name of my, of my title of my message, Three Lessons Learned from the Cross. For some reason I'm nervous. <laughs> but um, uh, this word that I have is Luke 23, 43. And Jesus said to him, Surely I say to you, this day you will be with me in paradise. And I'm going to continue on to look at the the uh, theme of the pain that Jesus suffered, Pastor Mike was communicating to us. And despite all the chaos going on that day of Christ's crucifixion, people were getting saved. Jesus spoke to this criminal and said, Surely I say to you, this day you will be with me in paradise. He spoke it personally. You know, when we get saved, it's one person at a time. Despite all the chaos, he spoke to this criminal person. And some around the cross, some of the people around the cross were coming to the realization that Jesus of Nazareth was who he claimed to be, the Messiah, Son of God, the long awaited King of Israel. The climax of human history was the day that God offered his son to be the salvation of mankind. God's plan of salvation prophesied in Isaiah 53 Centuries, centuries earlier have finally come to fulfillment. Jesus paid the price that day on Golgotha, Calvary, the place of the skull, that we may be free from the penalty of our sins. This 24-hour day was filled with unusual events, chaos and confusion. But before we look at the conversion of this malefactor, robber, criminal, this wrongdoer, let's Look at the unusual pain that your king suffered that day. Is he king of kings and lord of lords? Is he your king? Is he my king? Yes, he's my king. I can only have an answer for myself. Psalms 93 1 says that the Lord reigns. And he not only reigns, but he reigned in the past, he reigns today. He reigns in the future. He reigns for all eternity. And all four Gospels record Jesus standing before Pilate and asking him, Are you the king of the Jews? And three of the Gospels record Jesus saying, It is as you say. In the Gospel of John, Jesus, John records Jesus' words, You say rightly that I am a king. See, since he is king of kings and lord of lords, look at the way these people treated our king and the pain they inflicted on him that day. Look at the, the, the social pain of injustice. He was an innocent man. Pilate said, I found a fault on him. He officiated the trial. Herod said that he came come to the conclusion he did nothing deserving of death. The criminal on the right claimed this man has done nothing wrong. Consider the emotional pain he, uh, he suffered that day. He was ridiculed. He was stripped naked and dressed with a, a scarlet robe. All the disciples deserted. Peter denied him. Those who passed by the scene and the chief priests, they, they yelled out and hurled at him. He saved others. Himself he cannot save. Even the robbers who were crucified with him reviled him with the same words. Consider the physical pain he suffered. They beat him, they spat in his face, they scourged him and whipped him, placed a crown of thorns on his head out of mockery, they nailed him to the cross, they hoisted him towards the sky, and literally he succumbed, he suffocated to death. See how they treated our king that day? See how they treated God? What would you have done that day? Would you or I have jumped out 
when the of Della Rosa and said, stop all this chaos. Who, who are you? They're going to ask me, who are you? I'm Pastor Shelton. Man of Bible. Well, here's the sword. Want to lose your head? I, I probably would have received, would, would have recoiled to a safe distance like the other disciples. But before we go on, uh, there, was, there was one who did intervene. But before we go on, there's a clear lesson being taught by Christ our King. If Jesus our King suffered the incredible pain, don't you think it is fitting that we all, we who are his servants, suffer like he did? This is what Jesus said of the great Apostle Paul in Acts 9, verses 15 and 16. Jesus said, He is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. Paul, Jesus said, Paul must suffer. He must suffer. Lesson one, true Christianity in the Christian life equal suffering for Jesus. True Christianity in the Christian life equals suffering for Jesus. If you and I follow in the footsteps of Christ our King, you will be mocked. You will be scorned, maybe spit upon, imprisoned, the way our political climate is going, beaten, isolated, made you feel a fool, but you won't feel the pain of being separated from the Father. He took that pain for us. But there was one that day who intervened and took a stand against the abuse towards Jesus. In Luke chapter 23, verse 39 and 42, it reads, Then one of the criminals who were hanged blas blasphemed him saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. 